Hey Aquarius, this is Michael with your October 2022 reading. I do hope that this finds you well and in good spirits. We're going to be using astrology and tarot to figure out what this month has in store for you. So looking at the month of October, we have quite a bit going on. You can actually find all of the aspects and transits I will be talking about in this video and more of them uh, in my blog linked in the description box down below. You can also find links for personal readings or distance Reiki sessions. Um, and as always, I appreciate all of you who support this channel with your likes, shares, comments, and subscribes. It does help this channel grow and lets me continue putting out these videos. Um, but yeah, October is a very full month. We have three planets going direct. Three retrograde planets are finally moving forward. We have Mercury, Pluto, and Saturn all going direct this month. We also have a solar eclipse in the sign of Scorpio, and we even have um, Mars going retrograde at the end of this month. So there's so many things that are shifting around. Um, we're going to kind of break this down piece by piece and really look at how this is all affecting you personally, Aquarius. Um, and interestingly, the first card I got for kind of past energy coming into this month, we have the Three of Swords. And I'm sorry if you are feeling some sort of betrayal or just some sort of, of depression or loss or grief. That's often what the Three of Swords represents. Um, it can also just represent that you might be in a, a, an acute emotional state where you can't really rush moving forward or rush the healing. Um, this is showing up in the past, though, so I, I feel like you're coming out of a, of a healing cycle. You are coming into something that is smoother. This is also the first decan of Libra, which is kind of interesting because we have Venus um, kind of forming an opposition with Jupiter at the very beginning of this month in the sign of Libra. And there could be something with communication that is coming up that is kind of bringing about healing of old wounds or old patterns. And it's really changing the way that you think about yourself or communicate with people and maybe even like kind of a, a different perspective psychologically speaking. I could actually be seeing something like that happening right away. Um... So yeah, we, we have some pretty pointed energy right out the gate here. What else do we have for Aquarius? Whoops, closed my notes. What else do we have for Aquarius? Show us clearly, please. We do have Mercury going direct on October 2nd, and this is happening in Virgo. This is the first planet that is going forwards again this month. And with Mercury going direct in the sign of Virgo, for you... This really is like, maybe this is part of this healing with the Three of Swords. It, it could be working with your shadow or, or healing old trauma. It could also just be exposing a truth, something that needs to be said. Um, the, I, I really do get this sense of closure at the beginning of the month for you, Aquarius. Um, and we do have the moon forming a conjunction with Saturn in your sign as well. And so th that's happening around the 5th. There's just a lot of emotional healing, a lot of releasing of old cycles and, and karma and patterns. Um, and, and finding new prosperity, finding new passion with the Ace of Wands here. I feel like after maybe a period of heartache or loss, it's like you're ready to put yourself out into the world again. You're ready to go after something or maybe someone. Um which is really, really beautiful, actually. And with Pluto going direct in Capricorn, this is kind of bringing about shifts in your subconscious and your mental health, too. And you might be integrating a lot of things you've been learning over the past several months since April, when Pluto first went retrograde. Again, there's a lot of catching up. There's a lot of integration in the month of October. So whatever it is that you've been learning about, be prepared to implement some things this month. Um, we have a full moon in the sign of Aries. And this is really, again, um, kind of changing the way that you express yourself. And there could just be a perspective shift that, that happens this month. Um, or you're, you're finally... pursuing some sort of idea or plan that you have been making. And 
with this full moon in Aries, for you, this really could also represent the fruition of an idea into reality. And I know that sounds kind of abstract, but that's just what I'm getting. Um, we have the Page of Pentacles. Right as I say that, love, love, love this, because Page of Pentacles really is about getting your hands in the dirt and setting seeds, learning things through experience, and being a student again, or, or being open to the world again. I'm getting this in a lot of ways. I'm getting this both in a romantic sense, and I'm also getting this in um, kind of just a, a professional or even existential sense. Like, you're learning about things again. And there might even be something with education that's coming up. You might be learning a lot this month um, or integrating something that you have learned. And that could even look like a, a degree paying off or your education paying off. That's actually a way I could see that happening too. Um, or if you are undergoing some sort of study or course, this is an indication that whatever it is that you are working towards will be fruitful and abundant to you in the future. And I, I just feel this nice lifting of your energy, which we love to see. We love the Ace of Wands here. Finding that spark, finding that passion. Um, what else do we have for Aquarius? Show us clearly. Ten of Pentacles. Just as I was saying, something is going to be very abundant and fruitful for you in the long term. There is something about your legacy that is coming to fruition or starting to grow or take shape. And I really do feel like this is just the beginning of this energy. Um, maybe some of you are realizing some abundance or some newfound wealth or prosperity, but I feel like this is more about the future. You know what it is that you're working towards. And some of you may be letting go of traditional ways of looking at things or things you were taught that you wanted but you didn't actually want, kind of part of your conditioning, maybe in early childhood or even young adulthood, you're figuring out what you want genuinely and authentically and you are moving towards that and it's no longer this feeling of I'm stuck in my life, I, I've made these decisions and I can't go about doing things in a different way. There's a lot of levity, there's a lot of mobility and mutability for you. Um, beautiful, beautiful energy. And I feel like with Saturn going direct in your sign, Saturn is your ruling planet. This is doubly significant for you. You are putting in the work that you need to put in to see your desires come true. And there's this weight that is lifting off of you. And there's a lot that could be shifting around this time because whenever, especially an outer planet like Saturn or Pluto goes direct, or even when it goes retrograde, the beginning and ending of those cycles really can bring about some, some shifts. And maybe there is even this disruption that could be happening. Maybe something that is shaking your sense of stability here, but your roots are so much deeper than you realize. Um, and that, that's just kind of what this reading feels like. It's, you're planting roots that will reach much further and much deeper than you could even imagine. Um, really loving this energy, loving this reading for you. And we do have that so, uh, solar eclipse in Scorpio, that new moon solar eclipse happening on the 25th. It is also conjunct Venus. And this is actually you potentially starting a new career or going on the path of changing something or, or changing your public image, changing what it is that you contribute to the world at large. And something really big could be changing or shifting in your work life. Um, yeah, we do have you walking away from something. We do have the Eight of Cups. You are leaving something behind that was once fulfilling but no longer fulfills you. And it can be kind of emotional, but there is this new growth, there is this new passion, and it's like if you're really honest with yourself, even if it's a little bit sad or hard to imagine leaving a situation or maybe even relationships, it's important to remember that you already have the sense of fire about moving forward. If you aren't walking away from something or leaving something behind with the Eight of Cups, 
it could represent travel, it could represent some sort of movement physically, or even just getting out of an emotionally hard period. Um, th there is a lot of transition that I am getting with this card, with the Eight of Cups. And with this new beginning that we have in your career, in November there could be some sort of shift that is happening in your home or in your personal life that kind of coincides with that, because these eclipses most often work in pairs like that. Um, so some really, really big energies, really, really big themes. Anything else that we have for Aquarius? We do have Jupiter going back into your second house, uh, into the sign of Pisces on October 28th, and this could really be bringing some new finances as well, some financial growth, stuff that has been kind of in the works all year, especially earlier this year, before May. Um, there could be something that's really coming ahead. I do feel like there's a lot of plans for the future with the Two of Wands. You are moving forward. I really, really get that. And I, I know that very often that means you're leaving something behind as well. Um, with the Jupiter entering Pisces, there could just be increased resources, increased abundance that's allowing you to kind of uproot yourself or that's allowing you to travel more or just get out of, of the rut or situation or place you have been. And there's this expansion that is happening here. We do have Mars going retrograde at the end of this month in the sign of Gemini. Now, Gemini for you represents your fifth house, your house of passion, creativity, and pleasure. And you might, you might be really thinking about how it is that you go about seeking out pleasure or having fun or just enjoying your life. Let's pull a card and really kind of clarify. What is this Mars retrograde going to be about for Aquarius? Because Mars is going to be retrograde for most of this year, actually for the rest of this year into 2023. So these themes are really going to be playing out for quite a while. We have the Page of Wands for you. Um, this Page of Wands really does represent getting back in touch with this childlike creativity and wonder, this passion. Um, there could be a really passionate and exciting energy coming into your life. Um, I really feel like there is something about inner child work and getting back in touch with something that you haven't connected with in a very long time, maybe even since you were a child. Um, but yeah, I, I love this energy. I'm loving this reading for you, Aquarius. I'm going to pull some oracle cards here. I did drop like half the deck, so that's kind of interesting. Um... Mercury is still retrograde, so we'll just blame it on that. But I have been very, very clumsy in these readings, I'm noticing. Anyways, what do we have for Aquarius? Let's pull an animal card for you. We have the tarantula. Wow, all the things I was talking about. Shedding an old skin, going after something that you want because tarantula is an ambush predator, um, and really feeling things out. Tarantulas are actually very sensitive animals because they are covered in these fine hairs. They are able to detect subtleties in their environment. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But I, I do feel like you are moving towards something. You are shedding an old self. And I, I want to say, again, like, this wasn't false. Whatever it was that came before this, whatever it, it is that you're doing now or we're doing, it still feels like it was a necessary part of your growth. And growth has now led you down a new path or a new direction. We also have the cobra, again, energies of shedding, but also pausing and meditating and waiting for the right time to strike. I feel like intuitively you'll just know when it is that you need to act. You may be having some sort of creative or spiritual awakening. I'm actually getting sexual awakening with this too. Um, there could be a lot of activation both in your root chakra and solar plexus chakra. 
those are kind of coming up to me. There's a lot of red in both of these cards. Um, so there is this kind of energy of something rising and being very grounded and, and setting new foundations for yourself. There's a lot of fire here, so there's a lot of heat. Um, you are getting back in touch with this inner fire, this Ace of Wands. And I I'm going to say this too, fire is a very fast element. So don't be surprised if you kind of feel something stopping and starting, especially with Mars going retrograde in Gemini. Your creative process might be kind of stop and go. Your dating life might be stop and go. Um, that's something that could be happening. But overall, I feel like there's just this, this fire that is welling up from within you. I'm going to pull one more card. We'll pull from the Starseed Oracle. And if you are curious about any of the decks that I use, they are in the description box down below. Interesting. We have Lost Lands, Soul Memories, and Gifts. You've done this before. Yeah, that, that does feel like that hearkening back to this inner child or even this kind of spiritual gift or energy or place that you are reconnecting to. Let's see, Lost Lands. Um, here we go. The world is far more ancient than our documented history suggests. As souls, many of us have experienced ancient eras on this planet that were much more advanced than ours today. As we begin to remember these times, the rememberings and gifts can come flooding back. At this stage in Earth's timeline, we need the wisdom of the ancients to survive as a species. You're being called to connect with the lost wisdom of your own soul. If you feel guided to make a change in your life, to step into a new career path, birth a creation, or bring an idea to life, but feel unprepared, this card is calling you to consider that you've done this before. Perhaps your soul has wisdom beyond what your lifespan can imagine. Perhaps the intuitive hits and ideas you're receiving are divinely guided. Perhaps you've been preparing for this time. Some think that lost lands exist in the past. Others believe they exist today, in a different dimension. I believe that these ancient lands also exist in the souls of those who experience them. If this card comes to you, perhaps the wisdom of lost lands such as Lemuria, Atlantis, and Avalon exists within you. And through surrendering to the intelligence of your soul, you can unlock the seeds of these ancient lands so we can all learn from our mistakes and usher in a new age. Place this card or your hand on the portal of your heart and whisper the following. I unlock any forgotten wisdom and soul gifts from lifetimes past. Something this is also kind of reminding me of too. I, I did get a lot of creative energy and I'm almost wondering if some of you are writers or storytellers or, or working in kind of fictional or fantasy lands that are often drawing from these mythical places like Atlantis, Lemuria, Avalon. Um, maybe some of you are connecting to mythology in this way, and that could be some of the things that you're learning about, uh, with this Gemini energy, or I'm sorry, um, not Gemini energy, with this Libra energy. Um, there's a lot of focus on, on learning and integrating and creating with what you're learning. Yeah, make the change. Shed things. You know, don't be afraid to step down something. And it's it's like this card says, you've done this before. You've changed your life before. You can change it again. Um, I think those are all the messages I am getting for you this month, Aquarius. I, I hope this was helpful. Very, very exciting reading. You can find all of my links in the description box if you're looking for a personal reading or distance Reiki session. You're also welcome to check out the other videos, maybe for your moon or rising sign. There might be some messages there for you as well. Um, I have I have everything in the description box. Don't know what I was trying to say. Lost it. Darn you, Mercury retrograde. Anyways, Aquarius, I am sending you all my love and blessings your way. I will see you in the next video. Have a great and happy October. Music